There you are, a tiny egg buried in warm sand along the Atlantic shoreline. A whole bunch of you, about 80,000 siblings crammed together under a few inches of beach. Mom dropped you off during the full moon high tide, did a little dance with dad in the moonlight, and that was that. No goodbye kiss, no, see you later, just fertilize and forget. Welcome to existence. After a month of sitting in your egg, you finally break free. You're barely the size of a pencil eraser, with a body that looks more like a walking helmet than an actual animal. Your first challenge? Dig upward through the sand without getting eaten by the swarm of hungry shorebirds waiting for your grand entrance. As you and your thousands of siblings scramble toward the water, it's basically an all-you-can-eat buffet, where you're the main course. Those birds don't even have to try hard. Just stand there with their beaks open and wait for delivery. You make it to the water, swimming with your tiny legs while your hard shell makes you look like a moving pebble. The ocean isn't exactly giving you a warm welcome either. Fish are gobbling up your brothers and sisters faster than you can count. Out of those 80,000 eggs mom laid, maybe 10 of you will make it past the first year. Talk about terrible odds. Your life is basically eat or get eaten from day one. Your diet consists of worms, mollusks, and other tiny creatures hiding in the sand. Finding food requires digging through mud with your weird little legs while your body stays anchored above. Imagine trying to eat dinner while doing a permanent push-up. That's your life now. Your body isn't doing you any favors either. With ten eyes scattered across your shell and body, you'd think you'd have amazing vision. Nope. Most of those eyes can only detect light and dark and the rest are so basic they might as well be decorative. You navigate mostly by feeling your way around with your legs and pincers. Those famous tail spikes everyone recognizes? They're not weapons. They're just there to help flip you over when waves knock you upside down. Without them, you'd be like a turtle on its back, except without the cute struggling. Every few weeks, your body decides it's outgrown your shell. Time to molt. Your shell splits open along the front rim and you have to wriggle out of it like it's the world's tightest sweater. While your new shell is still soft, you're basically defenseless against everything in the ocean. Better hide until it hardens, which takes days. This whole process happens about 16 to 17 times before you're fully grown. Each molt is more uncomfortable than the last one, and each time you're left vulnerable and soft, hoping nothing notices your crunchy exterior is temporarily out of service. Four years into life, and you're still a juvenile, hanging out in shallow nursery areas where bigger predators can't easily reach you. Your neighborhood is a mix of sandbars and seagrass beds, all within a few feet of the shoreline. You spend your days plowing through mud like a miniature bulldozer, using your specialized front claws to capture worms and small crustaceans. Nighttime is when you really become active, feeling safer under the cover of darkness despite your terrible eyesight. By the time you reach 10 years old, you've finally hit puberty. That's right, a decade of life before your body decides it's ready to think about reproducing. You're now about the size of a dinner plate, with your horseshoe-shaped shell fully formed and hardened. If you're male, you're a bit smaller and have modified front claws that look like boxing gloves, perfect for holding on to a female during mating. If you're female, you're larger and have regular claws because who needs specialized appendages when you're the one carrying all those eggs? Now comes the weird part of growing up. Your body starts producing chemicals that make you want to head to the beach during specific full moons. It's like an overwhelming urge to attend a very specific party. The water temperature hits just right, the moon is full, and suddenly you're migrating toward shore along with thousands of others just like you. For females, this annual pilgrimage means dragging yourself onto the beach while possibly carrying a male on your back. He's been hanging on for weeks, sometimes months, waiting for this moment. Talk about clingy. You dig a shallow nest in the sand with your rear section, lay thousands of eggs while the male fertilizes them. Then you drag yourself back to the water, leaving your offspring to fend for themselves. Parenting complete. If you're male and didn't manage to grab onto a female before the beach party, you're left scrambling around the shoreline, desperately seeking unattached females or trying to knock other males off their ride. It's basically bumper cars, but with more desperation and less amusement park music. After the mating frenzy, it's back to the ocean depths for another year. You venture out further now, 
sometimes going hundreds of feet deep, where the pressure would crush many other creatures. Your ancient body design handles it just fine. After all, your ancestors were doing this 450 million years ago, long before dinosaurs even existed. Food becomes harder to find as you age. Your body demands more energy, yet your primitive design isn't exactly optimized for efficient hunting. You plow through the seafloor like an organic tractor, hoping to disturb enough worms and mollusks to make a meal. Sometimes you find plenty, sometimes you go hungry. By age 20, you're a seasoned veteran of ocean life. Your shell bears the scars of near misses with predators and rough encounters with rocks during storms. Those fancy tail spikes might be broken or worn down from years of flipping yourself over after waves have had their fun with you. You've survived countless molts, predator attacks, and habitat changes. Despite your primitive design and strange appearance, you have one superpower that's made you invaluable. Your blue blood. That's right. Your blood is blue because it uses copper instead of iron to carry oxygen. But the really special part is that your blood contains a substance called LAL, limulus amebocyte lysate, that instantly clots when it contacts certain bacteria. This makes your blood incredibly useful for detecting contaminants in medical equipment and vaccines. For this reason alone, you and your kind get caught, drained of about 30% of your blood, then released back to the ocean. Imagine getting abducted by aliens who drain your blood and then dump you back on Earth, all without explanation. As you approach 30 years old, your body begins to slow down. Finding food requires more effort, and escaping predators becomes challenging. Your once-efficient gills collect sediment and parasites, making breathing harder. Your joints stiffen, your movements become more labored. Yet somehow you keep going, driven by instincts programmed into your species for hundreds of millions of years. Your 40th birthday comes and goes without celebration. In the wild, reaching this age is a remarkable achievement. Many of your kind don't make it past 20. Your shell is now a patchwork of repairs from injuries and parasites. Parts of it may be missing entirely, leaving you vulnerable in those areas. Migration becomes more difficult each year. The journey to the breeding beaches that once seemed manageable now takes everything you've got. One spring, you might not make it at all, your body finally giving out after decades of struggle. Or perhaps a storm flips you onto your back on a remote beach, far from water, with no one to help you flip over. After hours of struggling with your tail spike, exhaustion sets in, and you become food for the gulls and crabs. Or maybe, just maybe, you reach the ripe old age of 50, making you one of the oldest horseshoe crabs on record. You've survived being prey, a blood donor, pollution, habitat loss, and countless other challenges. You've produced hundreds of thousands of eggs over your lifetime, with perhaps a handful surviving to adulthood. In your final days, as your ancient body begins to shut down, you drift with the current, no longer able to fight against it. Your last moments might be spent washing ashore during a storm, where you'll become part of the beach that once cradled you as an egg. Full circle and all that jazz. And to think, after 450 million years of evolution, nature looked at your species and said, Yep, that's perfect. Don't change a thing. Turns out when you look like a living fossil and bleed blue blood that's worth more than gold, nobody cares that your eyes don't work and your best defense mechanism is flipping yourself over with a glorified poker. Rock on, you magnificent prehistoric weirdo.